Hi, I'm James from the MakeSwift team, and I want to show you how to build a fully functioning, composable e-commerce site using BigCommerce, MakeSwift, and Next.js. Now to get started, we're going to build a new Catalyst application inside of the BigCommerce dashboard. So inside of my channel manager, if I go to create channel, you'll see that there's now a new option for Catalyst. Now we can go ahead and click create. We'll talk more about what this is exactly in a minute, but let's go ahead and actually create this storefront. So here you can give this a name. I'm gonna to choose to use sample data, which I recommend you doing as well so that everything looks consistent with what you see here. And I'm gonna choose the Vibes Soul Preview. And you wanna make sure that you choose this to match what you see in the video. And then for the primary language, we're gonna choose that as English as well. So then from here, we'll go ahead and create and give this time to actually generate all the things that are happening behind the scenes. While that's building, let's go ahead and talk about what exactly Catalyst is. Now, Catalyst by itself is just a reference architecture for building a composable e-commerce storefront. At its core, it's just a Next.js application, and it takes advantage of some of the amazing features that Next.js has to offer, like interacting with React server components, using server actions, and things like hashing and revalidation. Because we're taking advantage of these features, Catalyst comes out of the box with amazing Lighthouse scores to ensure the best user experience for your customers. Now, Catalyst also comes pre-configured with BigCommerce, meaning you have access to all of your product data. Additionally, you'll have a MakeSwift site generated for you. Now, MakeSwift is BigCommerce's visual editor, and this allows you to visually edit and customize all the pages in your application. Now, let's check on our newly created storefront. Now, first you'll notice that we have a link to the fully deployed Catalyst application that is deployed to the BigCommerce partner hosting sandbox. We'll talk more about hosting at the end of the video, but for now, you can actually click on this link and you can see the fully deployed application and everything that comes with it. And as you scroll down, you can see this comes with several different pre-built sections that we can easily customize inside of the MakeSwift site. So let's go ahead and close this tab and we'll come back to the overview of our Catalyst application. Now from here, we can click on the edit in MakeSwift button and this will take us to the site inside of MakeSwift where we can start to do our editing. Inside of the MakeSwift visual builder, there's four key areas that you need to know. There's the navigation sidebar over here on the left that has several different things. First and foremost, it has a pages panel where you can see all the pages on your site. There's actually a few more pages that we can access that we'll talk about in a minute. Then we have the elements tab, and this shows all the different elements that are inside of the cam canvas, which we'll get to in a second. So you can see as I scroll down and hover on these, it actually highlights the thing that I'm hovering on. And then we also have the design tab where we have our colors and our textiles to be able to tweak the look and feel of your entire application. Now, in addition to those three panels, we have the website and workspace switcher. So you can see all the different sites that you've created as well as switch your different workspaces. And then at the bottom, we have a few additional items that you might be interested in looking at. One is the files tab. This allows you to upload files to be used in your site, things like icons or pictures, that sort of stuff. You can see you can reference them across site or your workspace as a whole. And then we also have the settings where you can find all the different settings for your application as well. Now, the next area that you'll need to know inside of the Visual Builder is the component toolbar. So the component toolbar is gonna to give you all of your components that you can drag and drop onto your canvas, again, which we'll talk about in a second. So you have a few different options here by default, but if you wanna see all of your components, you can open the component tray and you can see all the different components that we have inside of this Catalyst application. Now we'll talk more about components and actually look at some of these individually in a second, but just know this is where you can find all of your components and you can click and drag these onto the canvas at any time, then be able to edit these as you need to. So I'll go ahead and clean that up. Now one distinction that I think is worth making is the difference between a component and an element. So components are the actual templated building blocks that you can drag and drop onto the canvas. Once these get dragged onto the canvas, they become elements, which is why this is called an element tab. An element is basically just an instance of a component in the canvas. And that again leads us into the next section of the visual builder, which is the canvas. This is where all the magic happens, where you can drag and drop, where you can customize, where you can build your pages and layouts the way that you want. Now, as you interact with different elements inside of the canvas, you can select them and notice that you'll get the properties for those individual elements showing on the property sidebar on the right. So for here, you can see that we have all the information for the different slides on the slideshow. If we wanted to update this to discover what's new updated, we can see that this updates in real time. So all of your properties that change over here will immediately be reflected in the canvas. Now there's one additional area inside of the visual builder that you should know, and that is the URL bar at the top. So you can see this has the URL for our deployed application. And then inside of here, if we click this, it'll actually show us the pages that we can go to. We can also manually type in pages that may not be shown inside of the pages tab. And we'll have an example of that in a few minutes as well. 
Now let's talk about components. This is what you'll actually use to build and customize your pages. In MakeSwift, there are two primary different types of components, ones that are created visually and ones that are created in code. Thankfully, Catalyst comes pre-configured with both. So let's step through a couple of examples so that you can start to understand the difference between the two types. Now, anytime you need to find one of your components, again, you can find that inside of the component tray, where you can see a list broken down by different categories in this case. You can also search in here if you'd like to, to be able to search for accordions, for example. This can be really handy as your list of components grows, but we have several different sections of components in here. We have a few different basic ones. We have a few catalog components. These are components that are actually connected to your BigCommerce product data. We have a few different layouts, and then we have several different sections that you can see in here as well. So let's start by talking about the slideshow component. This slideshow component that we've already talked about, you can see that you have access to all the properties for each individual slide over here on the right in the property sidebar. Now, what's interesting to note is this component is one that was created in code and in code, the developer is able to decide what different properties are needed for this individual component. So you can see we have the ability to add slides, each of which have their different properties for title, description, image, and a few additional ones. Now, let's say I wanted to come in here and update the image. If I go to replace this, this actually opens the file explorer that we saw earlier, and I can choose an existing image and actually apply that inside of the slideshow. So now I'll have to wait for this to cycle back around. And now we see our new image showing here. One additional thing that would be nice to know is the ability to move from build mode to interact mode. This allows you to interact with your website as if it was the final product. And in this case, because of that, I can go in and press the pause here and play to actually be able to interact with the slideshow. So now I can pause on this newly created image that we have here. Now I'll go back into build mode from here and then select the slideshow component again. Now, again, all of the properties for the components that are created in code are defined in that code as well, giving you the ultimate flexibility to work with a developer to add and remove properties based on what is needed inside of the canvas. So if we scroll down, we can see we have lots of other content and we can see some of this has been visually created where we can have a section here, we have a text block, we have another text block, and then we use the card carousel component. This is just the combination of dragging on different components until we get the look and feel that we're looking for. Now, one thing that's interesting though, is we do have a list of sections that we can reference as well that actually act a little bit differently. So I'm gonna add in the featured card carousel here, and we can see when we select this that the property sidebar on the right looks a little bit different. This is considered a visually created component where we take a collection of different elements on the canvas and actually group them into a component. Because of that, these components that are created visually act globally by default. What this means is if I were to replicate this component somewhere else and make a change to it, it would change all instances of that component on the canvas. So I could come in here and click edit component. Notice now I get access to these individual elements and I could update this to be categories, for example, and go ahead and save that. Now, just to show you how this acts globally, I'm gonna use shortcuts to copy and paste this. So I'm Mac Command C and Command V, and then I can choose where I want to dump the copy. And now we have two different instances of this global visually created component. So if we come in and update this back to category and then save this, notice the instance below this is going to update as well. So we have category down here as well. Now, if we didn't want that to happen, we can actually come in and detach this component so now it acts individually and separately from that original global component that we referenced. So now we have access to all these individual elements and we can edit these individually without worrying about this global one above. That's actually what's already happened with this section here. This started with the section that we have below and we've gone ahead and detached that for you so you can make edits how you see fit while also giving you the ability to choose some of these global sections so that you can reference them and use them whenever you want and detach if you need to. So I'm gonna clean this up and get rid of those couple of additional sections. So let's actually scroll down and look at an example of a component that's connected to your BigCommerce data. So inside of this section, we have our products list component. And you can see that this is actually listed underneath the catalog section. Again, these are components that are connected to your BigCommerce product data. So if I select this, you can see that we have a dropdown for product collection of newest, best-selling, featured, and then static only, which means we manually add the individual cards that we want. So we have the ability in this dropdown to change the set of product data that we actually want to have showing. Again, this is connected to your real product data inside of BigCommerce. So let's go ahead and change this to our featured section. You can see that this data is going to change. And then one thing that we can do from here is go into our product data and update a few of them to be featured and show that they actually show up inside of here. So if we come back to our BigCommerce dashboard and go back one and then into our products, 
Here's a list of all of our products. And I'm gonna mark the top two, ZZ Plant and Spray Bottle as featured. And then you can see as we come back here to this products list, we can see that shows up appropriately. So I'll go ahead and move that back to our newest section the way it was originally. Now you probably noticed that Catalyst comes pre-configured with a bunch of colors defined for you. Let's take a look at how you can really make this your own by customizing the colors, the fonts, etc. So first off, we can look inside of the design tab and see a list of all of our colors and our textiles. Now we have a bunch of different colors that are added in here, and this is basically just a list of colors that then can be used to do different things in terms of styling. Let's see how to do that. So to be able to use these colors on different components and throughout our site, we can go into the elements tab and we can choose the site theme component. Now notice this is one that's invisible. It doesn't actually show inside of the canvas, but we are able to find it inside of the elements tab and we can select it and then see that we have settings for our fonts in addition to the individual components that we have inside of our site. So let's start with something simple like the button. We can see inside of here that we have a lot of different options to be able to style this button. First and foremost, the thing that you'll probably notice is the background color. From here, we could change this to a different color if we wanted to. That probably doesn't look very good. We would also wanna update the hover to maybe the same color. And then maybe wanna change the foreground to a white color. Basically, we can choose any amount of colors that we want that are defined inside of our design tab. Now I'm gonna undo those because I don't think those colors are great, just using Command Z to undo. But you can see that you have a ton of customization options inside of here to be able to style your site exactly how you want and to be able to make that match your brand. So what I would recommend is starting with the design tab and getting a feel for these different colors and matching those with what fits your brand. Then you can come and adjust how those colors are being used inside the different components by using the site theme component. You basically have all the tools you need to have this match exactly what your brand is looking for. So far, we've only been interacting with the homepage, but Catalyst comes pre-configured with several pages that you can find in the navigation sidebar. Let's take a look. So in the navigation sidebar, you can see we have multiple pages we can navigate to. To navigate to one of these pages, it's as simple as clicking on it. For example, this blog list page. Now the blog list page is a little bit different because you can see on here, we don't really have any content that we can edit. That's because all of the template for this page is defined inside of code. But one thing you will notice is you still have access to the site header and the site footer. These are components that can be edited and are reused across every single page. So if we actually go back to the homepage, even though we didn't talk about this earlier, those header and footer components are here as well. And you can find them on every page if you scroll down far enough. And you can see them inside of the elements tab as well for the site header here and then the site footer at the bottom. Now, again, as you click on one of these elements, it'll take you to the appropriate spot on the page where the element is shown. So this is the list of pages that you can see inside of the navigation sidebar, but I mentioned earlier that you can actually navigate to pages, some pages that aren't listed here. A great example of this is PDP pages or product details pages. So what about the details page for the individual product like ZZ plant? Well, for me, I know the URL for this, so I can just type this into the URL bar manually where it's ZZ dash plant. And then by pressing enter, I'm taken directly to this page where I can see the product details page for that individual product. Now, one thing that we can also do, if you don't know the URL to that page, conveniently inside of your product data, inside of the BigCommerce dashboard, you can click on the menu options for this product, and then you can scroll down a bit and see the edit and make Swift button. And that will actually take you directly to the page that we were just on. So now that we're back on this page, there's a couple of things that you can do to edit this that may not be obvious as soon as you get there. So one of the things is as you hover across the details for this product, you see that this is actually a component. Now this is a component that's created in code, which means we have certain different properties over here that we can edit. One of the main things that we can edit is the source for this copy that gets displayed for the description. So right now, by default, this is listed as rich text. We could also have this as plain text. Obviously the italics and font sizes and things go away, which we probably wouldn't want in this case or we could have this be custom. And when we mark this as custom, we get what's called a slot that we can use where we can dump content into it. So we can take a piece of text, we can add that in here, we could add another image if we wanted to, we could really customize this to make it whatever we want. Now, the good thing is by default though, this is gonna show that rich text, which means you don't have to go into every product details page to customize it. You'll get your default rich text displayed, and then you can go in and customize individual ones if you need to. Now we talked about the difference between interact and build mode. And one of the things that we can see in here is if we go into interact, we can see that this is an accordion for specifications. And we can see if we drop this down, we have some information in here. 
Now let's go back to build mode, select this component again, and then look at a section called product info. Here we can click to add a new section and notice we get a new section listed under specifications. Again, we go in interact mode. It gives us the ability to expand this section and we see a slot just like we did before. So anytime we wanna build new sections inside of our product details pages, we can do this by adding the section, expanding that section in interact mode, and then going in and adding whatever content we want to. Now, obviously you could come back and delete this content as well. We can get rid of this just as easily as we created it. So that's a few different ways that you can customize the individual product details page. It's definitely gonna be worthwhile to look at all of the rest of the pages to see what other things you can customize as well. Now I encourage you to spend some additional time looking through the different pages, components, and their properties so that you get a real feel for how to customize this and really make it your own. After you've made all of your necessary changes, the next step is to actually publish this content. Once you're happy with all of your changes and you're ready to publish, you can come up to the top of the visual builder and use the publish button here. Now, when you pull this up, it'll show you a list of all of your changes from components, pages, site resources, etc. And you can choose all of these or individual pieces here that you want to actually put inside of your publish. So once you're here, you can choose to publish now that will make that go live immediately. Or depending on the plan that you're on, you may have access to the schedule publishing to be able to schedule that for some time in the future. Now, one thing to know though, is based on your plan, you're limited on the amount of publishes that you have per month. On the free plan, for example, you get five publishes per month and on different plans, you have different amount of publishes. Now, one thing that really helps with that is instead of just publishing immediately, you can use the preview functionality here to be able to share a preview link with somebody else for them to be able to look at all the changes that make sure on their end that things look good before actually doing a final publish. And you can see in the top right that there's a badge that explicitly says this is in previewing mode to make sure it's clear that this is a preview and not the final production. Now, the one requirement to be able to access this is that the user that you send this to must be a guest user on your site. So you can see this under settings. If you go to users, you could add a new user here and you could choose a type of guest. So you could add their email here, choose a type of guest, send them an invite, and you have no limit on the amount of guest users that you can have on your site which are basically people that have access to those preview links and can give you confirmation before you go ahead and do a final publish. Now I mentioned earlier in the video that by default, this is deployed to a partner sandbox, but it's not meant for you to use to go to production. The intent here is for you to pull down the catalyst source code, make any changes that you want to, and then be able to deploy that to your own account on your own hosting provider. We'll be working on some additional content on that in the future, but for now I'll include a link in the description below that will show you how to do just that. Hopefully this gives you a quick overview of how you can build a fully functioning composable e-commerce site using BigCommerce, MakeSwift, and Next.js. If you have any additional questions, leave them in the comments below and we'll be happy to help you there. In the meantime, happy building.